The following podcast was recorded on Monday, January 9th, 2023, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the 2023 first edition of Talking Data. I'm Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Happy New Year, Sam. Hey, Happy New Year, Kristen. Today, we're anxious to hear your update on all things steak. We just celebrated the holidays, lots of gatherings, lots of food and drink. And if we go back to 2022, there was a threat to the supply of beef. Supply was not supposed to be sufficient, but did the headlines end up being overblown? Uh, they ended up being overblown to a certain degree, right? And, and a lot of that has to do with the complexities of the supply chain of how you actually get a, you know, a calf to a cow to, you know, a steak. And that is not a straightforward or simple process. And it takes both a lot of time, it takes a lot of land, it takes a lot of labor, and it takes a lot of it food it takes a lot of a lot of things in the middle there with an incredible amount of logistics so were the supply projections wrong in a way they were wrong for 2022 but in a lot of ways it may have been a little bit of a delay and it may have been simply that people were looking at the wrong thing so what would you say in terms of the supply outlook as we head into the new year well, the supply outlook for now is pretty much the same as 2023. It's a little bit tight, but it's not too tight, right? There's there's enough supply coming to the market to uh, satiate the demand. Uh, but there is something to begin paying attention to, and that is the amount of feeder cattle coming into the system may not be as many as we thought or as many as we want uh, and that may be part of what keeps the call it, keeps the supply chain a little tighter uh, than people anticipate going forward so it may it, it may become something much more interesting to watch as we enter 2023 and throughout 2023 and walk us through your profitability when you you uh, use the term feeder to steak. So talk about all the input um, input costs that are involved and how that process works. Sure. So it takes a lot of land to produce a feeder cattle, and a feeder cattle is a smaller cat, you know, smaller uh, beef cattle that is then fed into live cattle, which is then turned into steak. And you know, it takes a significant amount of land uh, to have those calves. So in Texas, uh, at some of the larger ranches, you can kind of think of it as a million acres is about twenty-five thousand calves a year. So think about that much land for that many cows. And at the same time, another thing to kind of keep in the back of our heads is that there's about 13 million cow, you know, feeder cattle being fed at any given point at feedlots. So that is kind of the amount of land it takes and the length of time it takes to get from, I call it uh, hoof to steak. And the there's there's a number of things here. One, feeder cattle go to the feedlots, they get fed. It is a lot of corn involved here, a lot of transportation, a lot of logistics, and a lot of things that really I don't think is taken into account when we really think about what it takes to have you know the the protein on the table it's it's a significant one in time and two labor and three food and so if you have any of those elevated and right now you have transport elevated you have labor costs elevated and you have corn prices elevated uh it's going to cost more to feed which means live cattle will be more expensive which means steak will be more expensive so uh, you know there's there's some pressure on the number of feeder cattle uh, that are coming into the system and so that's a that is a another point of pressure on that end stake so it's it's a lot of things kind of going against uh, prices coming down here so in particular with meat prices coming down could you walk us through um, look at looking at labor right now how hard is it to find workers for these plants oh it's it's very hard I mean if you drive through uh, portions of 
the south, particularly the southeast, you'll see signs all over the place offering to pay significant amounts of dollars per hour uh, to people to work at processing plants. Uh, right? These are these are not jobs that people love to take. Uh, you know, they're very dirty, they're labor intensive, uh, and they're not call it enjoyable in general, uh, hopefully. Uh, you don't enjoy, you know, killing animals, but it takes it takes a lot of labor and that labor is expensive and it's very, very difficult to find it at the moment. Uh, it used, it, at one point it was satiated largely by immigration and immigration, uh, you know, certificates, et cetera, right? It was uh, immigrant labor that did a lot of the processing and a lot of that was shut down by COVID. Uh, so you have a number of things working against having enough labor uh, to process, whether it's poultry, whether it's uh, pork, or whether it's beef. So there's there's a significant amount of pressure there. And it's kind of in that order that you probably see labor come online, right? Processing chicken isn't as bad as processing pork, which isn't as bad as processing beef. So beef is kind of the last uh, one that kind of comes online there. How did drought conditions in 2022 mm -hmm. impact supply and prices? And it's not just 22. It's it's even back further than that. It's it's been a it's been a significant amount of uh, drought in the West. Uh, call it from 2020 even 2019 onward. That has led to a much smaller number of feeder cattle and smaller herds in general, uh, simply because there isn't the grass. Uh, so you have had those smaller herds. Those smaller herds lead to fewer. Uh, feeder cattle, fewer feeder, feeder cattle lead to higher prices, uh, and those those come online very very shortly, um, or they don't come online in a short time frame. Uh, it's not like uh, chicken uh, and eggs, right? When you have elevated egg prices, uh, you tend to bring on chickens pretty quickly to bring down egg prices. I would say that's one of the more interesting parts of ag right now is looking at the egg market, uh, but you don't bring on herds of cattle very quickly. Those take a significant amount of time, a lot of labor and a lot of investment and a lot of land. Uh, and that land has to have grass. And so it's, again, that is going to be a much longer term thing for call it 2023, 2024, and probably even into 2025 until those herds can really get back up uh, to size uh, and satiate global demand, particularly now that China's turning back on. So as meat as meat prices remain elevated, what is your outlook for the second half of the year? So the second half of the year, for particularly in 2023, I think it's it's going to be a story of how tight do we get as China reopens. That's that's going to be something that I think is really important to watch here. Um, the first half of the year, I, I think we're perfectly fine. It's it's not going to be a significant. Uh, surge in demand for protein uh, to, simply because COVID is ripping through China and that's going to tamp down demand somewhat. Uh, you know, Australia will come online that'll help out with, you know, they're a huge beef producer that'll help out uh, with uh, Chinese demand to a certain degree. Uh, but the second half of the year is really what I think we should be paying attention to. If you don't begin to at least see some herds beginning to grow, if you don't begin to see, uh, call it the number of chicken chickens, uh, laying eggs beginning to pipe back up. That's going to be a significant issue into the back half of the year as the call it the rest of the world joins the US and Europe in reopening. Sam, in summary today, is there anything else we should be watching for next? I, I'd be watching for a lot less optimism around food prices declining. Uh, that to me is is going to be one of the stories of at least of at least 2023 right that there maybe we have some disinflation uh, that begins to come through in certain parts uh, but reading call it chickens and eggs to beef is not is not something that should be done those are two wildly different markets that aren't going to disinflate at the same rate you might get some trade of you know i'm not going to have a steak i'm going to have chicken you might have some kind of trade downs in terms of uh, the expense of protein, uh, but you're not necessarily going to have the same pricing dynamics between the two. Sam, thank you for your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone and have a great week.